Number 10. The Paradise Tree Snake The Paradise Tree Snake is unique for one very interesting reason. It's able to press its body completely flat, almost to a point that it becomes concave, which allows it to project itself into thin air from high branches while twisting its body. This gives it the ability to move swiftly from one tree to the next. The snake's slender body is extremely long, at about 3.5 feet in length, and it can be found in many parts in Myanmar, southern Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore. And while this snake is considered extremely rare to most people, it's actually quite common depending where you live in these countries. The snake has a very weak venom, only able to immobilize small prey like lizards that live in the mangrove trees. As for humans, they don't really have much of an issue with these types of snakes. Because they're able to press their bodies so flat and maneuver high up in the trees, it's highly likely you will ever see one anyway. Number 9. Emerald Tree Boa The Emerald Tree Boa is another amazing snake that lives high up in the forest canopy. Adults are able to grow upwards of 6 feet in length, and they only weigh around 2 to 4 pounds. The largest one ever found was over 10 feet, though this has not been confirmed. Each emerald tree boa has bright eyes and a bright green body, like patterned scale jewels with zigzagging white stripes that almost resemble lightning bolts. It's considered one of the most gorgeous snakes in all of South America. The snake's belly is yellow. It has a bulky head and large heat-sensing pits underneath its upper lip, which it uses to track warm-blooded prey. It spends most of its days wrapped around tree branches waiting for something yummy to pass by. But what makes the emerald tree boa so magnificent other than its bright colouring is the fact that it has very long teeth which it uses to hold onto prey while strangling them to death with its muscly body. The big danger to humans when it comes to the emerald tree boa is that they are basically invisible amongst the rest of the jungle foliage. They live all throughout the Amazon, including regions of Brazil and Colombia, and sometimes they hang so low from branches that people don't see them until it's too late and the snake has already planted its jaws into their face. How scary would that be? The only good news is that the emerald tree boa is not poisonous and is not nearly as dangerous or as large as the green anaconda. Number 8. The Eastern Hognose Snake The Eastern Hognose Snake is one of the ugliest snakes on today's list. It ranges in colour from white and dirty brown as an adolescent to fully black and then eventually to orange and black. Still, it's a fantastic creature. One of the coolest facts about the Eastern Hognose Snake is that it can actually play dead when in danger much like an opossum. It sometimes hisses or flares up like a rattlesnake, but it's not poisonous or dangerous, and the eastern hognose is well aware of it. To keep itself out of trouble, the snake will play dead whenever you try to pick it up. It might look scary, but it's actually just a big baby. These snakes roam through southern Canada, all the way to Georgia and even South Carolina. They live primarily in woodlands, and when they decide to play dead, they will literally flip themselves onto their backs as if they just got electrocuted and go completely motionless. Since these snakes aren't venomous or dangerous, would you ever pick one up? Let me know in the comments section below, and don't forget to give this video a like and click that subscribe button. Number 7. The Rainbow Snake The Rainbow Snake was named for one pretty obvious reason, because it's completely rainbow coloured. The snake isn't actually that big, but it is covered in red, blue, yellow and black, and in the light it looks like the most colourful snake on earth. These creatures are nocturnal and mostly feed on American eels, earning them the nickname eel moccasins as they're able to swim through bodies of water just like eels. Adult rainbow snakes can grow to be upwards of 4 feet in length. They have very thick bodies and are some of the rarest snakes found through the northern peninsula of… where do you think? Florida of course. According to Florida Museum's snake ID guide, these flamboyant serpents are not actually a danger to people or pets as they mostly keep to themselves and hang out in the rivers. These docile snakes often won't bite in defence. If cornered or approached, rainbow snakes will often remain perfectly still or slither away slowly. If captured, they may press the pointed but harmless tail tip against the attacker. When they do this, they may release foul-smelling musk from two glands on the base of the tail. Still, you probably wouldn't want to meet one while taking a dip. Number 6. Two-Headed Serpent Florida wildlife officials recently came into possession of a two-headed snake after it was discovered by a family living in Palm Harbor. If a snake with two heads isn't rare or unique, I don't know what is. This weird slithery guy is a southern black racer, and it's something known as bicephalic, which means it has two heads on its body. This is likely the result of twins failing to separate while in the embryo stage of development, at least according to Florida's Fish and Wildlife Research Institute. The twin snakes didn't separate, and the ultimate result was that one body was created with the heads of both the twins. 
Here's where things get really cool. The heads are both able to flick their tongues and each head will react to any nearby movement. But the heads react differently, responding in their own unique ways to the nearby stimuli. It's doubtful that this animal would ever survive in the wild, as the plain fact of having two brains trying to calculate decisions makes it almost impossible for the snake to hunt effectively. For now, it will be studied and cared for by the professional Florida wildlife officials. But I wonder, if one of the heads eats, do they both feel full since they have the same body? Think about it. Number 5. Spiny Bush Viper The Spiny Bush Viper is without a doubt the coolest looking snake that we're going to talk about today. These vipers are native to Central Africa, and they can be found in a few different rainforests, and they are extremely venomous. They have spiny scales on them that kind of look like hundreds of mini leaves, they're vivid green and black, and just one look tells you how dangerous they are. These do not look like snakes you would ever want to mess with. Even though they only grow up to about 2.5 feet long, with a currently unknown lifespan, they look especially mean. Just like the emerald tree boa that we talked about earlier, the spiny bush viper is arboreal, meaning it prefers to hang out on low-hanging branches. If you were to accidentally walk by and bump into one of these snakes, it could bite and kill you. Its venom is neurotoxic, and it can cause your organs to hemorrhage. It's a pretty nasty way to die. Bush vipers are related to rattlesnakes and other vipers found throughout Asia, but they have one very cool feature. Spiny bush vipers have something called a prehensile tail, which lets them grip branches so tightly that they can hang completely upside down to catch prey. This isn't something other snake species can do. Number 4. Albino Spectacled Cobra An albino spectacled cobra has recently been found in India, and according to the New Indian Express, it is one of the only albino cobras ever seen by human eyes. Albino cobras are apparently in the top 10 of the rarest albino animals in the world, making them by far the rarest and most unique snakes on the list today. Spectacled cobras themselves are extremely rare, but albinism in snakes is almost unheard of. It's like if the yeti mixed with the Loch Ness Monster. That's the level of rarity I'm talking about here. It's not super clear right now exactly how this albino spectacled cobra came to be, but most scientists can agree it was probably just a freak genetic incident, and one we might not ever see again. If you're wondering what the difference is between a spectacled cobra and a king cobra, the latter is the largest and most dangerous of the cobra species. The spectacled cobra is still highly dangerous and should never be handled, though it is the favourite of snake charmers throughout India. Number 3. The Couch Constrictor A boa constrictor was recently discovered by a man in Kansas while he was just simply looking for his keys in his couch cushions. This is a true nightmare of a story. The boa constrictor definitely isn't the rarest snake anywhere on the planet, but when one of them is living inside of somebody's couch cushions, that's a whole different story. According to ABC7 Chicago, the snake was about 7 feet in length, and it may have been living inside this guy's couch for weeks or even months. This guy must apparently have the most comfortable couch in the world, right? The only reason the snake was even found is because the man woke up in the morning, realised he couldn't find his keys, and thought they might have been wedged between the couch cushions. It happens, but this guy was no snake handler. He called in the police to help remove the animal, which ended up being surprisingly calm and gentle. It was removed without incident, though nobody could figure out how a giant boa constrictor managed to sneak into the guy's couch, never mind go unnoticed for weeks and weeks. Authorities are now telling people to make sure they always check under their couches and under their beds, as you never know what kind of snakes, spiders or other horrifying monsters are down there waiting for you. Number 2. St. Lucia Racer Snake It's time to look at the rarest snake in the world, quite literally. The St. Lucia Racer is a small, non-venomous snake that lives, as you can probably guess, on the island of St. Lucia. There are estimated to be less than 20 of these snakes still remaining in the wild, making the St. Lucia Racer the rarest snake in the world. They live on a small islet of about 9 hectares named Maria Major, and this small islet is also home to 90% of yet another critically endangered species of reptile, the St. Lucia Whiptail Lizards. The racer snakes are so horribly threatened that they're basically just a few years from extinction. But there is hope. Scientists are trying to breed these rare snakes with another species known as the Antiguan racer. Hopefully, they can bring this rare and beautiful animal back from the edge of oblivion. Number 1. Aruba Island Rattlesnake The Aruba Island Rattlesnake is considered to be the rarest rattlesnake in the entire world, according to Animal Diversity Web. They were once found all over the island of Aruba, as well as a few other islands in the West Indies, but they are now confined to just a single spot of the region, as tourism and development have pretty much wiped them out. 
They live in the rocky and arid hillsides on the southern end of Aruba, in a small area only 12 square miles. Luckily, this land is currently protected, so the snakes are not in any immediate danger of being wiped out. Still, they're ridiculously rare and hard to spot. As with other types of rattlesnakes, these serpents have heavy bodies, rectangular heads, and a tail that rattles. They also have diamond-shaped markings like rattlesnakes that you'd find throughout the United States. Considering they live in such a remote place, Aruba Island rattlesnakes don't actually have any natural predators. They're at the top of the food chain in Aruba, and they feed on whatever they want. They are highly venomous, and their diet consists mostly of birds and lizards, and even a few rodents. They have something known as proteolytic enzymes in their venom, which work to begin digesting prey immediately, breaking down the structural components of organic tissue. Basically, this rattlesnake melts its victim's flesh when it injects its venom. Yikes! Number 10. The Toad Freak The Suriname toad is at first glance absolutely bizarre. The toad is so flat and triangular that it looks more like a rock sitting at the bottom of a river. It also has strange star-shaped fingertips, which has earned it the nickname the Star-Fingered Toad. But beyond its weird appearance, this freaky toad has an absolutely bizarre reproductive strategy that makes it one of the creepiest things found in nature. Unlike most toads, this one has an extremely strange way of carrying its babies. A female will release anywhere between 60 and 100 eggs to be fertilized by a male toad. But that's where the similarities end. The female will then push the fertilized eggs onto her back, where they stick to her skin. Then her skin grows around the eggs, creating a disgusting structure that kind of looks like a honeycomb filled with little tiny pockets. She literally absorbs her eggs into her back. And then when it's time for the eggs to hatch, the little toad babies crawl out of holes in her skin. It's absolutely brutal to watch as the little toadlets squirm from the makeshift hive on their mother's back. But believe it or not, this is actually an amazing evolutionary advantage as the eggs can't be eaten by predators. By the time the little toads hatch, they are already able to begin hunting, and the mother then sheds her skin and is ready to do it all over again. Number 9. Poison Trees One of the most horrifying and creepy things found in nature is something known as the Australian Stinging Tree. This disturbing tree looks just like any other you might find in the wilderness of Australia, but it has a dangerous secret. The leaves on the poison tree are a little fuzzy, but otherwise not out of the ordinary. It's only if you look very closely that you can see the fuzziness of the leaves is actually a whole lot of tiny needles. These tiny needles are filled with a fluid that can have the same effect on a human person as scorpion venom. In fact, the needles on the tree act like hypodermic needles to inject you with incredibly dangerous poison. And in a new study done by pain researchers at the University of Queensland, scientists found out that the tree leaves produce a type of neurotoxin previously unidentified by scientists. This neurotoxin targets the pain receptors in a human being in the exact same way the venom delivered by a spider or scorpion does. Locally, the stinging tree is known as the gimpy gimpy tree, and a single touch can leave you with a pain like you wouldn't believe. The pain actually goes on for hours, days, and even weeks. Just having a shower can leave you in crippling, burning, and stinging pain as the water hits the spots where the tree injected its poison. But what's truly interesting is that researchers believe that the tree developed its poison stingers as a defense mechanism, just like insects with stingers. As it turns out, trees are smarter than they look. Could you imagine getting stung by a tree? Have you ever been attacked by nature? Let me know in the comments below. Then, remember to subscribe to Epic Wildlife if you haven't already for more intense videos just like this one. Number 8. Tentacle Madness On a permanent display at the Shima Marine Land Aquarium in Japan, there is the creepiest and most disturbing octopus specimen ever found on the planet. An octopus usually has eight tentacles attached to its body. However, the specimen in Japan has 88 additional tentacles, making it a 96 tentacled octopus and a true freak of nature. The story goes that the octopus was captured in 1998 off the coast of Japan. It was captured alive and even managed to lay eggs in captivity and is to date the only mutant octopus who has ever done so. All of the baby octopuses hatched with the appropriate number of tentacles, but none of them survived over a month. And as for the mutant mother, she only survived about five months after being captured. But you probably want to know about all the tentacles. How is sprouting 96 tentacles possible? Well, each extra tentacle was actually an extension of the octopus's normal eight tentacles. They were just branches growing off the main arms. 
One of the theories is that the octopus may have sustained some kind of injury, and then during her process of regeneration, an abnormality occurred that caused her to sprout a whole lot of extra appendages. Number 7. Bird Tornado If you're the kind of person who's scared of birds, you'll probably be absolutely horrified by what I'm about to say. There is a creepy phenomenon known as a bird nado, and it's 100% real. It's basically a bird tornado, with thousands upon thousands of birds swirling in a funnel hundreds of feet up in the sky in a destructive vortex of beaks and wings. It's definitely the scariest thing anyone who doesn't like birds can come across. Scientifically, the bird nado is known as a murmuration, and it's what happens when a flock of thousands of starlings fly together in a tornado-like formation. Starlings are extremely common in both North America and Europe, and they are infamous for getting together in huge flocks, some of which can contain up to 4 million birds. The reason this hurricane of birds is possible is because starlings are able to track the exact movements of seven birds around them while flying in a flock. With thousands of them working together, they can easily streak across the sky in a swirling hurricane, and this apparently offers them protection from predators and lessens the amount of energy needed to fly. And while it's unlikely that a bird tornado will rip through your town and destroy your house, there is a huge issue with the bird's droppings left behind during one of these formations. A swirling tornado of thousands of birds leaves behind tens of thousands of bird droppings. It's like a poop whirlwind. Number 6. The T-Rex Infection Sue the T-Rex was the most complete Tyrannosaurus rex fossil ever found. To this day, she is arguably the most famous dinosaur in the world, housed currently at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. But this big and savage dinosaur had a rather disturbing affliction during her life over 66 million years ago. Sue may have had a shocking oral infection caused by some kind of prehistoric parasite. Not only that, but researchers are now suggesting that Sue the T-Rex may be the first recorded case of an infection, causing misshapen teeth in a large animal. To understand this a bit more, let's take a look at the teeth of a T-Rex. They were absolutely huge. A typical T-Rex had teeth the size of bananas, and would have been able to grow new teeth every one or two years. When teeth fell out, a T-Rex would just grow new ones. But with Sue, she had three malformed teeth found inside of her mouth, and researchers from the University of Manitoba have concluded that she suffered from something known as trichomoniasis, which today is a disease that sometimes spreads to chickens and other birds. This disease would have caused the dinosaur to be in serious misery. Sue probably had such horrible tooth pain that she could no longer eat or drink near the end of her life. It's honestly just a little creepy to think that even millions of years ago, tooth infections were the bane of life on Earth. Number 5. Toad with eyes in its mouth A very disturbing toad was found living inside of a garden by two small girls in Canada. The toad suffered from an extreme genetic phenomenon that biologists refer to as macromutation. This particular macromutation had the toad being born with its eyeballs in the roof of its mouth. Its eyes were literally inside of its mouth! Macromutations almost always have a significant impact on whichever organism they affect, and they usually occur because of a regulatory gene that structures something improperly. And in fact, some biologists suggest that macromutations can explain certain biological adaptations. For example, if toads survived better with eyeballs inside of their mouths, the macromutation could become the norm for toads, and it would have happened in one single genetic leap. But despite all the scientific intrigue, a toad with eyeballs in its mouth is still seriously disturbing. It's not clear whether the toad could see through its mouth, though the man who actually took the photograph of the animal did say that when the toad opened its mouth, it seemed to become increasingly aware of its surroundings. For now, we can chalk this up as a freak mutation. Number 4. The Venus Flytrap The Venus Flytrap is by far the creepiest plant found anywhere in nature. It just looks horrifying. This plant blooms in the spring and feasts on living insects with its menacing jaws of death. The plant consists of hinged leaves growing out on stalks, with each leaf looking like a mouth. When the leaf is touched, it springs shut and traps little bugs inside of it, which then slowly die and are broken down by digestive acids and enzymes. The Venus flytrap basically makes a soup out of the insects it catches, and then slurps that soup into its body. It takes about seven days to fully digest an insect, at which point the trap will open again and wait for another victim. Each trap is able to eat between five and seven insects before it dies. But don't worry, the Venus flytrap will continue to produce traps for as long as it lives. And here's what a lot of people don't know. The Venus flytrap is actually American-made. 
The only place where the Venus flytrap grows naturally is in North and South Carolina, in a handful of boggy areas. People generally think this plant comes from some kind of crazy place in the Amazon jungle, but it's simply not true. It's a 100% USA plant, and the creepiest in the world. Number 3. The Disgusting Bristle Worm One of the most disgusting animals in nature calls Antarctica home. I'm talking about an 8 inch long worm called Eulogisca gigantea. The organism is a type of marine worm equipped with golden bristles that it uses for swimming, for creeping along the floor of the ocean, and for defending itself. Looking at the worm close up is quite frankly disturbing. The worm has what's known as a retractable pharynx, which is basically a retractable mouth full of fangs that it pushes out of its body when it needs to eat. It's like an earthworm mixed with a xenomorph mixed with a bristle brush. It's the worst thing imaginable, and it's longer than most people's hands. In some species, the bristles are even able to absorb venom, making them not only creepy, but also venomous. Number 2. The Blood-Eyed Lizard The horned lizard is perhaps the rudest, strangest, and most disgusting creep in the animal kingdom. The horned lizard spends most of its time sitting alone, completely motionless and basking in the desert sun. It only grows to be around 5 inches in length, it has a crown of horns on its head that makes it look a lot like a dragon, and it happens to be a rather attractive snack for a hungry coyote. In the case of a coyote attack, the blood will squirt straight on the coyote's tongue and deliver such a blast of horrible flavour that the coyote will drop the lizard from its mouth and stagger backwards in disgust. Even though the horned lizard has mottled skin that helps it to blend into its surroundings, it's still often caught by predators. But wait, because here's where the creepiness of the horned lizard really becomes useful. When a predator tries to grab hold of the lizard, the lizard will squirt blood from its eyes directly into the predator's mouth. The blood tastes so gross that predators have no choice but to retreat, while the completely uninjured lizard runs away. But you may be wondering how exactly a lizard is able to squirt blood from its eyes. According to an in-depth report on horned lizards by the BBC, there is a pouch beneath the reptile's eyes which swells and fills with blood. There is then a sudden surge of pressure inside the blood pouch, which works like a balloon filled with too much water. The pouch ruptures and blood squirts out in a stream that can travel a distance of nearly 6 feet. Imagine that! Number 1. Choking on a duck Even if you're a fish lover, you have to admit that fish are kind of gross. Fish are some of the most ridiculous things that occur in nature, and so it's no surprise that some of the things they do are extraordinarily creepy. Take for example this 25 pound pike that tried to swallow an entire duck and died in the attempt killing itself and the poor duck. This happened at Lock of Lowes in Scotland, when the fish surged up from the bottom of the lock, tried to gobble down the duck in one big gulp, then got the bird stuck in its mouth and choked to death. The greedy pike was later found by a man out for a leisurely nature walk, who certainly hadn't expected to stumble across such a weird scene. The fish had somehow washed up on the edge of the lock after its botched meal. But this isn't the only instance of pike being really creepy and greedy. According to locals, Pike are notorious for their large appetites, with some people even reporting pikes surging out of the water and trying to swallow small dogs. The pike even has a tongue like sandpaper that helps it to drag unsuspecting animals into its hungry gullet. The largest one ever caught in Scotland was over 47 pounds, way back in 1947. Number 10. Sharp Tiger Tongues Tigers have some very cool tongues. They're not normal tongues like ours, but they're actually dangerous. One thing almost nobody knows about tigers is that their tongues are covered with small spiky things called papillae. They are only visible if you really zoom in on the cat's tongue. These spikes are sharp, they face backwards, and they give the tiger's tongue a sandpaper-like texture, which allows the big cats to strip feathers and fur off their prey. They could even strip the skin off their prey if they got a hold of you and really wanted to. This is how a tiger gets the hair and fluff off of its victims. But the tiger will also use its rough tongue to clean its own fur and to give its cubs a gentle bath. If you were to be licked by a tiger, it wouldn't necessarily rip up your skin, but it definitely wouldn't feel good. Imagine a piece of sandpaper or velcro rubbing against your skin with the force of a strong tiger. The tongue of a tiger is so strong thanks to its papillae that it can rip the meat off an animal's bones with just one or two licks. If it can do that to an animal, just imagine how it would devour a popsicle. Number 9. Sleepy Snails Snails are the best sleepers in the animal kingdom. Bears might be famous for hibernation, but they have nothing on land snails. Certain types of snails are able to sleep for up to 3 years. That's a pretty powerful nap. 
A snail will only sleep for this long under very poor conditions. The thing is that snails need moisture to live. If the weather turns bad and there isn't enough moisture in the air, and not enough rain coming down to keep the snails wet or at least moist, they will go to sleep for as long as it takes. This is especially true in warmer climates, as the snail will fall asleep to escape the summer heat and not wake up until the conditions are ideal. But the way the snail sleeps is equally as fascinating. A snail will secrete mucus all over its entire body to protect itself from the hot weather. It's basically like if you covered yourself in snot and then fell asleep for a couple of years. It might sound comfy to a snail, but it's pretty disgusting for us humans. Additionally, snails don't sleep based on day and night. They have random sleep schedules that involve them snoozing for anywhere from 13 to 15 hours a day, waking up with a huge burst of energy that can last for up to 30 hours. Imagine if you could do that. Would you want to be able to sleep for 15 hours and then stay up for 30? What would you do with that superpower? Let me know in the comments. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to Epic Wildlife if you haven't already, and get ready for more interesting videos just like this one. Number 8. Slow Motion Squirrels In a shocking discovery made by researchers at the Trinity College in Dublin, it turns out that small animals like birds, dogs, and even human children see the world at a higher frame rate than the average adult. The smallest animals, such as squirrels, may actually be looking at the world through a permanent state of slow motion, in which everything around them appears to be moving dramatically slower than what you or I would perceive. Experts are saying this slow motion vision may be the result of small animals and insects needing to avoid larger predators. By seeing the world in slow motion, animals like squirrels have a better chance of escaping certain doom. To kind of put this into perspective, researchers are saying that in the eyes of a squirrel, a human would appear to be a lumbering giant moving in short, awkward steps. However, the normal daily activities for a squirrel would appear to be completely normal. This is kind of how when we look at a squirrel, we see it moving in fast, twitchy and highly spasmodic motions. Smaller animals appear to us to be far more hyperactive, whereas things like elephants are clearly lumbering giants. The way that we see an elephant moving slowly towards us is probably the way that a squirrel sees humans, and the elephant probably sees us as twitchy little squirrels. That's absolutely wild! It might be related to the fact that larger animals have longer nerves from their limbs into their brains, so that the stimuli from their environments reach their brains more slowly. That means they had to slow down their brain's processing power in order to see the world and feel the world in sync. But it also means that when little kids scream and cry after being told to be quiet for 10 minutes, it's because they think 10 minutes is an eternity. It really makes you think, right? Number 7. Penguin Proposals Penguins are the most romantic animals in the entire world, even surpassing humans in terms of romance. One of the strangest things that people don't know about penguins, specifically Adelie and Gentoo penguins, is that the male will literally propose to a female. We already know that penguins mate for life, but researchers have now figured out that in order to get that lifetime relationship started, the male penguin needs to propose. And it does this in a super adorable way. A male penguin will scour the beach to find the smoothest pebble around. The pebble will then be handed off to the penguin's favourite female as a gift, sort of like how a man might propose to a lady with a diamond ring. If the female penguin is willing to get married, she will accept the pebble and place it inside of her nest. And from that moment on, the two penguins are married. But wait, because this isn't all flowers and roses. There is something known as pebble envy among male penguins. When some male penguins can't find smooth rocks of their own to give to their prospective wives, they will sometimes steal them from others and present them as their own. Number 6. Upside Down Flamingos Flamingos have extremely long necks, which makes what I'm about to say so much harder to believe. The truth is that flamingos are only able to eat when they're upside down. It's like saying you can only eat when you're standing on your head. According to National Geographic, flamingos feast by stirring up food from the bottom of lakes. They dip their belly into the water, slurp up all the crustaceans, brine, insects and fish that they can find, then they use their tongue like a pump to push out the water while keeping the food in their beak. But this process can only be done while the flamingo has its head upside down. If it scooped up a mouthful of food and then lifted its neck straight, the functions necessary to filter the water from the food wouldn't work. It absolutely must be upside down if it wants to properly eat, and that's a little weird. Number 5. Bats Can't Walk Have you ever noticed that you have never seen a bat walking? You've definitely only ever seen a bat hanging upside down, clinging to the side of something or flapping around with its wings. And it turns out that this is because bats are literally unable to walk. 
Now get ready for an explosion of facts. First of all, bats are the only mammals able to fly. Their bodies are designed to be aerodynamic with ultra-light bones and very thin wings. There are about two dozen joints inside of a bat's wings, and their wings are covered with specialized touch-sensitive cells like the ones on our fingertips. And now here's the deal with its legs. Bats have such thin bones that if they were to stand on their legs, their legs would shatter. Their legs are basically useless. Their knees also face backwards. If a bat accidentally ends up on the ground, the only thing it can do is to use its front limbs to drag the rest of its body until it finds a place where it can fly again. However, there are indeed two species of bats that are able to walk. The vampire bat and the burrowing bat are able to walk, with the vampire bat able to sprint using all four legs in an awkward way. However, this is only two species out of 1200. Almost all bats are immobile if they can't fly. Isn't that strange? Number 4. Sea Otters Hold Hands You may have seen pictures and videos online of otters holding hands, and you may have wondered how much truth there is to the images. And the truth is that otters do indeed hold hands. Sea otters actually hold hands while sleeping to prevent themselves from floating away and getting lost. Sea otters spend the majority of their time in the water, sleeping and hunting and mating. They even give birth in the water. However, it's still possible for them to get lost or to float away too far from the rest of their family when they close their eyes and go to sleep. So, sea otters either anchor themselves in place by getting tangled up in some kelp or seaweed, or they hold hands with a buddy so that they act as each other's anchors. It's adorable and also helpful for survival. Number 3. Drunk Chimps Chimpanzees have figured out how to drink alcohol. Just like their human cousins, chimps have taken a serious liking to getting a little bit drunk. Scientists studying chimpanzees in Guinea have discovered evidence of repeated ingestion of ethanol by chimpanzees. The study went on for 17 years, with researchers repeatedly witnessing chimps using leaves to drink fermented palm sap. Somewhere along the line, chimpanzees figured out that if they drink enough of the palm sap, it will get them inebriated. This study was published in the journal Royal Society Open Science, and it showed that the chimpanzees would climb trees in large social groups to drink naturally fermented palm sap, using leaves like sponges to soak up the sap and then slurp up its alcoholic contents. The research team from Oxford Brookes University discovered that the sap contained about 3% alcohol by volume, which, after a significant amount of observation, translated to certain chimps drinking about a full bottle of wine. The researchers also claimed that the chimpanzees showed signs of being drunk, and many of them would fall asleep immediately after drinking copious amounts of the sap. Number 2. Elephant Thumbsuckers In more adorable news, it turns out that baby elephants are indeed babies. What I mean by this is that baby elephants actually suck on their trunks, just like baby humans suck on their thumbs. What's even more interesting is that they do it for the exact same reason. Just like how human newborns suck on their thumbs for comfort, so too do baby elephants suck on their trunks. What's even stranger is that elephant calves are born with powerful sucking reflexes, which allow them to instinctively know what to do when it's time for feeding. And because sucking equals food, sucking also equals comfort. This is why you can often find baby elephants wandering around sucking on their trunks, looking ridiculously cute. Number 1. The Cat's Meow if you've ever wondered why your cat is meowing, but have been too lazy to Google it, get ready to be amazed. A cat will meow specifically to communicate with a person. It is 100% true that cats, at least adult cats, do not meow at each other. They only use vocalization to communicate with human beings. Kittens will meow only to let their mother know that if they happen to be hungry or cold. But when a kitten becomes an adult cat, it ceases to meow to other cats. They only meow because they want something from you. However, don't let meowing be confused with yowling, as these are two totally different things. The yowl is a more high-pitched and whiny kind of noise that cats make when it's breeding season and they're ready to do some feline mating. But you're probably wondering why some cats meow more than others. The truth is that nobody really knows. Cats meow at people for four main reasons. Cats will meow in greeting, literally saying hello when they walk into a room. Cats will meow to solicit attention when they want to be played with or talked to. And of course, cats will meow when they want food or when they want to be let inside or outside. What's your favourite animal fact? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to Epic Wildlife if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.